President Bonner, Deans McLean, Halibowicz, Vice Chancellor Nash, Dr. Geoffrey Whissington, Dr. Joe Smith, Dr. Wade's family and friends, members of the Black Faculty and Staff Association, members of the 100 Black Men of West Alabama, friends and colleagues from Stillman College, faculty, staff, students, and others. Welcome to this gathering to honor Dr. Archie Wade, the first African-American professor hired at the University of Alabama. As you know, the ceremony is part of an ongoing set of events collectively known as the Through the Doors program, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the integration of the University of Alabama. My name is Matthew Curtin-Smith. I'm the department head of kinesiology and the one who's been sending you all those emails. <laughs> Before we get started with the program, I should acknowledge and thank Drs. Carlton McHarg and Rebecca Ballard for all their help in organizing this event and the sponsorship of the 50th anniversary planning committee and the Dean's Office in the College of Education. It's very difficult summarizing anyone's life in a few minutes, let alone one as eventful as Archie Wade's. But I'm gonna have a go at providing you with some edited highlights so, you, so as to give you a flavor of what Archie has faced and achieved. Archie Wade was born in Big Cove, Alabama in 1939 and grew up in rural Alabama and all that that entailed in terms of racial discrimination. He went to segregated schools, picked cotton, and learned to play baseball, basketball, and tennis exceedingly well in deplorable conditions, mainly due to the encouragement of his father and with the help of his immediate and extended family. Archie and his family moved to Tuscaloosa when he was a teenager in 1955. He witnessed the first an ultimately unsuccessful attempt to integrate the university in 1956. He attended Stillman College on an athletic scholarship in 1957 to study for a business degree. He also got certified to teach physical education at Stillman in 1962. During his college years, he witnessed the upheaval and turmoil of the civil rights era, as I am sure did many others in this room. As a student, Archie also spent a great deal of time in the evenings and summers organizing baseball and basketball leagues at the African American YMCA on the west side of town. These efforts, together with other contributions to the organization and the community, were recognized by the Y in 2010 when he was inducted into its Hall of Fame. On graduating in 1962 and helped by his professor, coach, and mentor, Geoffrey Whissington, first African-American to get a doctorate at UA in 1968. Dr. Whistenton, would you just stand please for a minute? There he is. <laughs> Dr. Whistenton helped Archie get hired by his alma mater, Stillman College. He spent eight years at Stillman teaching in the PE department and coaching baseball and basketball. During this time, he also finished a master's degree at West Virginia University by taking courses in the summers. From 1964 until 1967, Archie also had a very successful minor league baseball career. He was discovered by a scout from the Cardinals organization who had come to Tuscaloosa to watch one of his players and was permitted time off to play in the summers by the Stillman administration. He set a number of minor league records, was managed at one time by the legendary Sparky Anderson and even played one game against his brother Harold who was with the Red Sox organization. Archie also played in the longest continual, continuous professional game, which started at 7.30 p.m., lasted until 2.30 a.m., consisted of 29 innings. Worse, Archie's team lost 4-3, <laughs> and he was two for 12, which put a bit of a dent in his batting average. In 1964, then UA President Dr. Frank Rose gave Geoffrey Whissington three tickets for the Alabama-Georgia football game with the idea that he and two others integrate the stadium. Geoffrey invited Archie and Nathaniel Howard to join him and the three of them duly broke the color barrier in that particular realm five years before the team was integrated. As you can imagine, they fa faced a hostile and unnerving reception 
the majority of the crowd that day. Again, following the suggestion of Geoffrey Whistenton, President David Matthews offered Archie a position at the University of Alabama in February 1970. He duly accepted and became the first African-American professor on campus working in what is now the Department of Kinesiology until his retirement in 2000. As a child and youth and into his adult life, Archie's hero had always been Jackie Robinson, the African-American handpicked to break the color barrier in Major League Baseball in 1947 because of his skill, passion, character, and ability to withstand the pressure and prejudice he would inevitably face. Whether intentional or not, it appeared that the University of Alabama chose a man to break its color barrier who possessed many of the same qualities as Jackie Robinson. Archie spent his early years at UA teaching courses by day and studying for his doctorate in the evening. And it was in this capacity that I believe he first met and worked with Jim McLean. After several months, he was also asked to spend his weekends recruiting African-American players for Bear Bryant's football team. He spent two years in this role, although he was ambivalent about recruiting black players to an institution which had only recently opened its doors to him. By dealing with the inevitable scrutiny and more than his share of unsavory incidents with great dignity and grace, and thus successfully integrating the University of Alabama's professorate, Archie Wade paved the way for other African Americans to join the faculty. He was also one of the founding members of the Black Faculty and Staff Association. I met Archie Wade in 1991 when I arrived at the university as a rookie assistant professor. I enjoyed visiting his office and was fascinated by his stories about the civil rights era and all that he had gone through. I was struck by his kindness, grateful for his advice, and in awe of the relationship he had with our students. They clearly had a deep respect for and revered him. Out of earshot, to the students, I knew that I was just plain Smith. <laughs> whereas Archie was always Dr. Wade. Thank you very much. Now it's my pleasure to uh, welcome Dr. Jim McLean, recently retired Dean of the College of Education. Thank you. Thank you, it's good to see everyone. And so many folks that I've known over the years and uh, retired faculty and others. <clears throat> Archie Wade was one of the first faculty members to give me a warm welcome upon my uh, time of coming to the capstone in 1974. He was in a different department and our direct contact was primarily at faculty meetings and other gatherings. However, every time I saw him, he gave me a warm greeting and we talked about things. We did get to know each other a little later <clears throat> when he introduced me to his brother Harold. He, was, he told me his brother Harold was working on a doctorate uh, at Ohio State University and um, uh, was working on his dissertation. And uh, Harold came over to the campus and we got together and uh, uh, worked on his dissertation a little bit. Uh, hopefully I had a little bit of a contribution to that. but. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, I know he successfully completed that and has gone on to have an illustrious career of his own. Now, Her uh, uh, Archie more than paid that back a few years later uh, when my son was playing in a youth basketball league where the coach quit and uh, they uh, recruited me to take his place, the coach's <laughs> place. Now. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that, that was the mistake to begin with, but <clears throat> who was the first person that I went to? It was Archie Wade. Of course, he was teaching the coaching classes. <laughs> uh, Archie helped me uh, learn some very basic defenses, showed me a number of plays, and then I went back the next day and tried them with the, with the kids. I'll tell you that the defenses worked very well. The offenses, not so much. <laughs> When you're working with nine and 10 year old kids, all they want to do is take shots from about 30 yards and further out. <laughs> and uh, he didn't tell me that. <laughs> but uh, 
I recognized Dr. Wade to be an outstanding colleague who would go out of his way to help fellow faculty members, and even more to help students. <clears throat> also, I recognized the hardships that he encountered. Some of them have just been described as the first African-American faculty member uh, at the University of Alabama. In my eyes, too, he was the Jackie Robinson of the faculty of the University of Alabama. I truly admired his maturity and his grace in the way he handled that function. When I returned to the capstone as dean in 2004, he had already retired. However, he was still one of the first to come back and greet me and welcome me back to, uh, to Tuscaloosa. I've enjoyed our conversations since that time. We've gotten together a few times. I'm grateful to him for his friendship and for his contributions. I'm also grateful to President Bonner and Dr. Matt Kurtner smith for recognizing him in this way. This, this is an honor that's well deserved. And I really also appreciate the opportunity to be included uh, within this. As I've edited down my remarks so I wouldn't be redundant with what Matt has just already said to you. But congratulations and it's well deserved honor. Mr. Marcus Cotton, Vice President of the Black Faculty and Staff Association. I'm very proud to be here and represent the Black Faculty and Staff Association. Dr. Wade, because of you, Black Faculty and Staff exist today. You paved the way for so many and it's because of you we have the opportunity to walk on this campus today. And because of that, we present you this award for igniting the pioneering spirit in all of us and your extraordinary achievement. We honor you with the Flame of Inspiration Award. This is presented today to Dr. Archie Wade from the Black Faculty and Staff Association of the University of Alabama, 2013. Fowler, Vice President of the 100 Black Men of West Alabama. Good afternoon. It is an, indeed an, a distinct honor for me to be here this afternoon. I've never had the privilege of meeting Dr. Wade officially, personally. However, I have been impacted by his presence and by the accomplishments and achievements uh, through his tenure here at the University of Alabama. It is because I am a university employee that I myself was inducted into the 100 black men of West Alabama. And no doubt that would not be, have been possible without the overwhelming achievements and accomplishments and the trials and tribulations that you endured in the early years. And for that, I give you my personal thanks and appreciation. Now, on behalf of the 100 black men of West Alabama, I would like to extend an offer of honorary membership into our organization based on those achievements and accomplishments uh, that have already been outlined here today. They are truly historic. The 100 black men of America is an organization that is founded upon the concepts of leadership, intellectual development, and economic empowerment, all of which you personify and have personified throughout your life. So at this time, I extend an invitation to join our organization following the official vote by the membership and pending your acceptance. We will offer uh, we will schedule an official induction ceremony into our organization. And from there, we will seek to submit your name and your historic achievements to the national organization for national recognition. But now I'd like to just 
offer a small token of our esteem and our appreciation from the 100 black men of West Alabama. And now, uh, Dr. Judy Bonner, president of the University of Alabama, will unveil the plaque that uh, we plan to hang in the conference room in Moore Hall, which is where the Department of Kinesiology is housed. Dr. Bonner. Before I unveil the plaque, I would like to ask all of the faculty and staff who worked with Dr. Wade to stand so that we can uh, recognize you. <clears throat> It is a real honor for me to be here to assist in the recognition of a real giant. Those of us who are still at the University of Alabama providing leadership in order to make our university the kind of university that is supportive of African American faculty, staff, students, and faculty, staff, and students uh, who are diverse and make our university really great, have the opportunity to do this standing on the shoulders of giants like Dr. Wade. I'm going to ask him to come with me and help me unveil the plaque so that I can read to you what it says. First of all, good evening to everybody. I, uh, this is not prepared at all. You see, I have nothing, so I just want to take a few minutes and let you know that I really do appreciate you all coming, and to all the people who spoke your kind words. I really will always be grateful to it. And I just want to let you know that uh, everything is okay. I'm not feeling the best, but I'm okay. Sorry about that. Uh, life has been up and down, had peaks and valleys. This is the peak of my life to come today, and I wanted to be here. I've had a low, and I'm sorry. I just don't feel like it. Some of you may not, excuse me, some of you may not know that I am going through treatment right now. And I'm with your life. Uh, there are times that I just don't feel as good as other times. But let me just tell you that I can be more thankful to the university for providing me with an opportunity to come and work 43 years ago. And I want to let you know that I would always appreciate that. I always said I'd do the best I could as long as I was here. I was here 30 years and I did that. I don't regret anything that I've done because I did my best. And I've enjoyed 13 years of retirement. And I hope to have a few more. But I just want to thank God for being able to be here. He didn't say it would be easy. He just said he'd be with me. And so I'm here today, and I'm proud to be here. I couldn't be, feel more like anything else and be anybody else except to be here. I just want to thank the people who came out, and Dr. Barner and other people for coming, all the people who meant a lot to me in my life, I want to also say that last week, I had tears in my eyes because I came through this door, Rose Administration, and Moore Hall. Those are the same buildings I walked through 43 years ago. When I came through the university, I came to Graves Hall first to meet the dean. He carried me to vice president. Brought me back to the dean, the dean to the department chair. And last week, I took those same trip in different times and different places, but it reminded me of 43 years ago. But it's so different now, because I came down with a lot of apprehension. Today I'm coming with just elated to be here. And I want to thank all of you, and I'm sorry that I did have a 
totally emotional breakdown, but <laughs> I'm just going through this and I'm sorry. But I want to tell you this, I saw something the other day and it says, the most beautiful things and wonderful things in the world are not seen or even touched, but they're filled with the heart by Helen Keller. And it just meant a lot to me. If all those people who work with me, I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. And I will always be loyal to the university. And I hope things will get better. So from now, I hate to stop now, but may God bless all of you.